In this tutorial, I'll be going over how to make feathers or fur using alpha planes and fiber mesh. This method uses fiber mesh to create hair planes across the model without having to hand place them like you would have to do in 3D Studio Max. In this video, I'll be using the dog model from ZBrush. It has been subdivided and is ready to create hair planes. First thing to do is change your masking to lasso, or you can also paint in the mask. Now paint or mask an area on the model where you would like the hair planes to go. Once that is finished, go over to the fiber mesh rollout and select preview. The preview should have hair applied to the masked area. The hair is geometry, but it's so many and so small that it looks like hair fibers. Great for rendering, but not for games. Next, we want to go into the modifiers and the fiber mesh rollout. This is where we alter the hair fibers to look like big planes that we can use to apply images of feathers or hair. There are a lot of parameters, but the ones we will focus on are max fibers, length, width, coverage, and segments. We'll first start with the max fibers. This is to get the try count down, the number of hair planes down to a number that works for a game engine. Next, adjust the coverage and bring the number up so the planes get bigger. Right now, the segments are at 3. Depending on your try budget, bring it down to 2 or 1. Next, adjust the length. Next is just the profile curve. You can edit the root and tip independently. Continue to edit until you get the desired number and size for your hair planes. You can adjust the gravity to pull the planes down.
When you have the look that you want, click the Accept button to create the hair planes as a separate subtool. You can use the grooming brushes to style the planes, but it can get a bit tough. So we have the geometry, now we need to give it some UV coordinates. In the UV map rollout, go to the Create section. In the Create section, choose Fiber Mesh UVs. This will take all the planes and map them all on top of each other so they can all use the same image. Now export only the hair planes and then we will import them into Max. Once a max do file import and bring in the OPJ of the airplanes. I've brought in the low poly version of dog to use as reference. Once imported, we will add the image of a feather to visualize what the final result will look like. Right now, we are at a little over 2,000 tries. Just be aware of your count. Convert the mesh to an editable poly and reset the X form just to zero everything out. Apply an unwrap modifier so we can see the UVs. We will need to scale these UVs in.
All the plane UVs are on top of each other, but they're also welded together. If you have more than one variation of feather or hair images, you will need to select random planes and break those UVs to separate them from the group. Doing this will help break up any repetition in your images. For this demo, I only have one feather PNG with a transparent background. Click the M key to bring up the material editor and drag out a standard material. Then from your Windows Explorer, drag in the feather image and connect it to the Diffuse section. Double click on the material and apply it to the selection and then view it. Now go back into the Unwrap modifier and scale the UVs to fill up the planes with the images. Back in the Material Editor, connect the image to the Opacity section. Double-click on the material and click into the Opacity map. In there, change the Mono Channel Output to Alpha. So that's basically it. This is just one of the many methods to create hair or feathers for your model. You can take the image and run it through a normal map generator like Substances Bitmap to Material and get all your PBR maps. Use the feather texture as its own rather than group it with your model's texture. That way, in the engine, you can set the feather material to double-sided. Thanks for watching.